Fort York was established in the early 19th century and was jointly used by the British and Canadian military. This was born out of a previous garrison established by John Simcoe Graves who was the first lieutenant governor of Upper Canada. Simcoe established Fort York with a small garrison of 100 soldiers from the Queen's Rangers. The initial site was set up in a triangular configuration and consisted of several log barracks, guardhouses, a stockade and sawmill. The fort protected the entrance to Toronto Harbour. In those times Lake Ontario would have come within 20 feet of the outer wall of the fort, where the condominiums and Gardiner Expressway are currently located, would have been part of Lake Ontario at that time. Fort York had to be rebuilt following the Battle of York in 1813 against the Americans. It was officially handed over to the Canadian military in 1807 and then in 1923 it was designated a National Historic Site of Canada. Right now, we are in the soldiers' barracks. Soldiers would spend a considerable amount of their off time here. They slept, entertained themselves and ate in this room. The cabin could hold up to 32 soldiers. That meant the majority of the time the soldiers slept two to a bed. With these very close proximities, there was next to no privacy. You can spot one bunk that has a curtain around it. This bunk was for the lucky soldier who won a draw and could bring his family along with him. This included his wife and children. The wives of the soldiers would typically get jobs on the base doing laundry and other odd jobs. Children under 16 were not required to work. On the table you can see the daily allotment the soldiers would receive as a part of their pay. An interesting fact was that each soldier was allotted two liters of beer per day. That does not mean the soldiers were walking around the base drum every day. In actuality, the beer had a very low alcohol content and was used to improve the drinkability of the water they had on hand. As we continue with the tour we have moved on to an officer's cabin. Officers were treated to a private room with all of the luxuries and comforts of home. Generally they would have a bedroom with an attached sitting area. This was necessary to attract and retain top talent. Unlike soldiers, officers had to be literate in order to read orders and carry out various administrative duties. The officer would also have a room for his assistant. The room with the smaller bed is the room for the assistant. can see the level of comfort afforded to an officer. Unlike the soldiers who slept two to a bed, an officer had a private room with a big window to bring in lots of natural light, a stove for heat and a big comfortable bed. The walls and shelves in the barracks would be adorned with personal effects bringing added comfort to an officer during his long assignment. The barracks walls in the officer's barracks were brightly painted while in the assistant's room the walls were unpainted. The assistant, who was usually an older soldier who was no longer fit for battle would also enjoy a private room with a large fireplace and a comfortable bed. We are in the officer's dining room. Unlike the soldiers, officers were responsible for purchasing their own food and supplies. As an officer you would earn a premium rate, so the military did not provide your meals. This dining room was more reserved for special occasions. Often the table would be set with beautiful ceramic plates and silver utensils. As we continue with the tour we will be moving on to the kitchen next. officer's assistant was responsible for hiring the kitchen staff which included a kitchen manager and two or three additional staff members. The shelves of the pantry would always be stocked with a variety of products which would have been ordered in by the kitchen manager. The kitchen manager would also develop relationships with local producers to procure fresh fruits and vegetables when in season. Leaving the kitchen we are now moving into the officer's parlor. This is where officers would gather during their downtime to enjoy a spirited game of cards as well as a glass of imported whiskey. As we leave the officer's barracks we will be entering the last building on this tour. This building has been converted into a self-guided exploration of army weaponry, uniforms and overall layout and design of the fort. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoy the rest of the tour and if you have not done so already please hit the subscribe 
subscribe button and click the notification bell so that you will always know when we upload a new video. Until next time my friends, stay safe and may your days be filled with positive vibes.